Welcome to Business Opportunity Identification Part 2 of the Enterprise Development and Investment Promotion Program. Outline of the, of the lecture of today is idea generation, error in selection in the idea generation, and key issues we have to take care of when we do the idea generation. Idea generation, A, when we look into an idea generation and how can we bring sourcing of a project idea from an idea generation is through natural resources. We look into the natural resources in the country, maybe the raw material. It could be the sea, it could be minerals, it could be water, it could be agriculture, the soil, it could be the human resources, it could be technology and innovation. All of those are natural resources in a country. Those either natural resources, it's always a good element which will allow us to start thinking and sourcing project ideas. Sometimes there are industries which are already existing or anticipated to be done. It will give me an idea that these industries that are there, why not to start developing my own business also in the same line? Market driven. A lot of times the idea generation comes from a market. If I don't have a market, which is de determined by demand and supply, oriented by a need, or a creation of a need, or to tailor a need. And this is what we have looked into quickly in, 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 part, two, in part one of project identification process. Market, it is the place. Market, it is the generation of ideas. I have to look into the market. I have to vision the market from different and several angles. This will allow me to start generating ideas. But I don't take the market as static. I have to look into how to develop the market, how to be innovative in the market. And this is always the niche for any entrepreneurial project or enterprise creation project. I have to see my niche. How can I penet penetrate this market and what I'm going to get from this market today and tomorrow and in one month and one year and in two years? This will happen by creativity, innovation, creation of needs. And creation of needs today, it is a very important element and tool to identify and to generate any investment idea. Because I can see that there is a services or a product being offered to people in the market, but I have to be innovative. I have to give the people more comfortability on that product. I have to give the people more com comfortability in that services. For example, in some communities, in, in India or in the, in the Middle East, for example, they wear what they call ibaya. Ibaya is a, a black uh, fabric mainly. It's, it's mainly the women they wear it. In the past, seven, ten years back, it used to be just black. Nowadays, we see that there is a lot of embroidery, a lot of paintings, even the color is changing. So we created the need and we tailored the need in that product. Services, you know, in a small community, there is supermarket, small supermarket. So instead of me coming to the supermarket, just by telephone, this is a very basic idea. I will supply the products 24 hours to the client. Sometimes even some pharmacies, they do that. You call, you have the prescription, okay? You put the order, I send the order to home, you give me the prescription, I, I check that it's the right prescription, I give you the medicine. If you're sick, or if someone of the family is sick, you don't have to go out. It will come to you. Sometimes during the winter, maybe too cold to do that. Sometimes it could be raining and you are sick, but you need, you, need, you need the medicine to be delivered to you. This is creation of a need in the market, tailoring of a need in the market, that I come to you. I provide you a better tailored product that which you really um, require, but in a different way, in a different pattern. In, uh, in a different delivery system. Idea generation could come a lot from service uh, sectors, that I could be servicing a sector, okay? 
uh, tourism. I have a country which has a lot of uh, sites for tourism, but there aren't a lot of operators in the tourism, not a lot of programs, not a lot of this taxi or, or minibus shuttles which will come and take people from one place to another. They collect you in a hotel or at a meeting point and then they take you to the different sites. There are no brochures, okay? There are no photos which tell me or to promote to me in some countries and in some communities, of course, in some countries there are, to show me what I can see in the country, okay? Um, gift items, takeaway items, okay? Those are all to serve sectors, you know? Industry, sometimes packaging is very important for some industry, but there are the products there, but there are no packaging system, even for agricultural products. You can have very good agricultural products, but you don't have the right packaging system for those agricultural products. So those are all services, uh, ideas I can generate for, uh, for a product or a services which is, exists in a community or in a country, but how can I serve it better? How can I improve the quality of services for a product or a service itself better? Creative effort. I always have to be creative. For a small product or small services, which for an enterprise which I would like to create, I have to be creative. I have to be creative in communicating with my clients. I have to be creative in presenting my, uh, my, my product. I have to be creative in bringing my services to the client. Of course, there are, there are several ways of, several uh, uh, elements for, for, for idea generation. Um, it could come for me, for example, that I start looking into traveling. I see a product, a services, a project which I don't have it in my country. So I can bring it back to my country. I can watch a film, you know, through exposure, okay? And then in this film, I see a new idea, a new product there. Why not I bring it? I navigate on the net, on the internet. I see a lot I can learn about. So why not I can develop it as a project? I can read in a newspaper. I can visit an exhibition, a jewelry exhibition, an industrial exhibition, a furniture ex exhibition, you know? So it can make me to generate ideas, you know. I can be talking to a friend, a family member. It can make me to generate ideas. There are several ways, you know, where we can generate ideas. You know, we start from uh, my personal capacities, my personal background, my education, my working experience, my talent, the environment I'm living in the resources available in, in, in the country and, and, and more, I'm, I'm living in, the, the needs of the people, the wants of the people, and how can I create better and more and tailor the needs and the wants of the people, you know? This is all through creative methods. You know, I have to be creative, to be innovative, to develop a new enterprise, to make this new enterprise either for a product productive sector or services to work. I have to be different to compete in the, in the, into the market. Now, if we look into the natural resources in the idea generation and how to convert them into profitable enterprises. In some countries, for example, we may have forests, which means we can have a lot of wood, a lot of wood products, even, you know, Leaves, we can use them for petomas, okay? So I can think about a lot of, lot of projects in the carpentry or even, you know, cutting the wood and export it. This is raw material, as an example. Agro-waste. This is just to give you some sample of, of ideas. There are a lot of waste which comes out sometimes from agro-products, but I can use them like in the coconut shells, you know, like the bananas. Now we can do even fabric, you know, from, from banana leaves, you know, from the co coconut, you know, we can weave and we can use it even for, uh, you know, for agriculture, you know, to, to seep, you know, the salt or so on. Marine resources, you know, some countries, you know, you can have rivers, 
you can have the seas, you know, you can, you can do a lot, you know, by, from, from fresh, you know, from uh, corals, uh, uh, you know, from even, you know, you can grow now, you know, some mushrooms in the sea, you know, some algae in the sea. So there is a lot we can get natural resources from the sea. Minerals, you know, you name it, you know, uh, gold, silver, you know, chromium, you know, zinc. Uh, this is can aluminium bauxite, you know, this can be a very good source for me for project identification or project ID identification. Of course, livestock, you know, chicken, you know, cows, camels, you know, this is could also make me think about, you know, maybe uh, uh, since some countries or some communities is, you know, it's very good for grazing, you know, grazing animals. So it may be a, it may be a good idea for me to, to graze animals and maybe also to process, you know, any kind of animals. Uh, you know, nowadays, you know, with the renewable energy, you know, we can have wind. You know, wind, it could be a very good source, you know, for renewable energy, which I can use it, you know, for any productive sector, sun and also the solar energy. Um, you know, nowadays also through solar energy we can bring a lot of projects in renewable energy. Human resources, of course, as I said earlier. Human sometimes is a very important factor. It is a natural resource. You know, some, some communities, some countries, they have very good people, you know, well-educated, vocational schools, you know, services oriented, you know, they're very good to, to provide services. So this is, could be, for me, as an entrepreneur, a good source of identifying, um, you know, an opportunity there if, if I'm, I'm overwhelmed with a country where human resources is quite available. In natural res resources, we must pay attention to. First, of course, we have to exploit them. We have to know how, what are the technologies which we can use to exploit natural resources. You know, the quantities of those resources and for how long we can have them. The stability of the resources in the market, you know, how up and down they can go because I don't want to invest in, in, in a natural resource and they're not that stable in the market, especially for me as a small entrepreneur. You know, sometimes the infrastructure, yes, the natural resources may be there, but you don't have the right infrastructure. So, it means you're going to tap on a project, you're going to work in developing the project, but the infrastructure is not there. So how can you exploit those natural resources? The commodity itself, the trading dimension, you know, is the system. How, how I'm going, I'm going to exploit it, I'm going to have these natural resources, how I'm going to trade it, how I'm going to market it. The legal dimension in the country, how I'm going to register, you know, the the exploitation of this, maybe sometimes it could be a very expensive kind of a mineral. Legally, how I'm being protected, you know, after I do the exploitation. Other consideration, of course, I have to look to, into some of the administrative rules or regulation in the country. Do they change? Do I need to get a pre-license? Do I need to get a full license before I start doing this? If I need to export, what are the taxes I'm going to pay for the uh, distillation I'm, I'm, I'm exporting this product? do I can access those countries, you know, or are there problems, are there waiving of or tax exemption on those countries? In the idea of generation B, we have to look also into, we said, existing anticipated industries. There are similar projects there. There are projects in the same uh, idea generation I have, okay? I have to look into those projects. I'm going to add something. I'm going to be innovative in bringing this new uh, idea, or I'm just going to do, duplicate. I'm going to replicate that. Why not me? Are the raw material available for that existing industry? Are there enough? Or can I look and source for uh, other sources to, to bring the raw material for this? industries, you know, either from another region or another country. So I can be like a feed industry to this existing industry because I'm going to look into making a trading enterprise by bringing the raw material to be available in the market for these industries. 
further processing of output of existing industry. You know, and this is sometimes a very important um, element for idea identification. That, for example, there is, let's say, there is an aluminium smelter, okay, or, or an iron rod, you know, uh, factory. This may allow me that to 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 downstream products in the aluminium. I can do tables from aluminium. I can do doors. I can do windows. Okay, so the availability of that industry will allow me to process it further. Okay, I have um, um, uh, an iron factory. It may allow me also to develop things on that line. I have uh, uh, PVC, you know, this kind of, of sheets, which may allow me to develop so many things, you know, from rooftops to boats you know, to kitchen uh, utensils and so on. So the availability of an industry can allow me to make a chain or to make a downstream industries. And this is sometimes a very important tool or, or element for project identification that I can downstream from an industry a number of small and medium and micro industries. Nowadays, of course, toward greening or green growth or green industry. We started to look a lot into uh, recycling and looking into waste projects and to bring them into an investment. And in UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, specifically in the investment technology promotion, we are very keen and we work with a lot of entrepreneurs to help them and to bring also and to support them in generation of project idea in the waste and waste recycling of industry, uh, you know, like in, in several areas, in, in, in wood, in aluminium, in, uh, in even agriculture, or agro, agro businesses waste, you know, that it could be recycled and it could be profitable instead of just waste them, to dump them, dump them, you know, which they may harm the, you know, the, the, the ground, they may harm the seas, they may harm the air. If we recycle them, it will be a better investment with profitability. Packaging material. You know, there's a lot we can do into the packaging, especially in industrial products or agro products. You know, you may be having, in a locality, you may be having a lot of farmers, they have a lot of products, but they don't have the right packaging uh, instruments or the uh, ready material for packaging. So this is, could be a very good element for sourcing project idea that you can develop um, a packaging, small packaging, uh, you know, factory or a workshop where it could do the packing, you know, for agricultural products, industrial products, and then you can develop this chain industry by feeding those sectors. Of course, you can always outlook for existing industry for your, of your own interest. What are you interested in? What is your profile can determine you? To, to, to have an interest through any sector you would like, and it's closer to your heart. Of course, sometimes we can look into a lot of projects in the pipeline. You can see what are their projects at different ministries, at different uh, communities, so that it's on the pipeline. Why you not you can grasp it? Why not you can implement it if you are capable, if your qualities and your capability will allow you to develop this project? Sometimes you look beyond the local industries. You can see industries not only available in your locality, but you can bring them. You know, as I said, you may, you may, you may, you may see, you may visit an exhibition, you may travel abroad, you may navigate on the internet, and you may find that there is an industry which is, does not exist in your locality, but you can bring it, why not? You can always extend or modify present work content, you know. There is an industry, you can exist. Existing industry, you can modify it, or you can expand it. You can expand the work of that industry. Idea generation, C, is demand-driven for, or market-driven opportunities. Are we, we look into, in, in, into the idea generation, are they demand-driven? or market-driven. 
And then there's a big difference if they're on demand driven or market driven. Because as I said, when we talk about the demand driven, we can always play on the needs. We can create the needs. We can tailor the needs. Okay. And when we see also, when we look into, into the market opportunities, it is what the market is needed. What the market gap in the market I can come in, into, into the demand and supply. So the first point we look here is import substitution. You know, if I'm importing a product, or sometimes even services, why not I manufacture it or do it locally? Gross products. Why I don't grow with a product? And this is, as we said, we can further process, you know, the, the products. Export. Instead of just selling the product which I have in the local market, why I don't export it? Export it either outside of the community or outside of the region or from the national boundaries. Basis of import, you know, of course, we should have a competitive advantage, not just a, a potential advantage. Networking, you need to develop a big networking, small, of course, and then it will grow big. Idea generation D, you know, we have seen in A and B and C, and now in D, is the service sector opportunities. What are the, and there could be a lot of opportunities in the service sectors. Of course, you can serve existing industrial enterprises. Medium and large projects in the pipeline. You can see that there are a lot of pipeline projects are coming into a locality. So I can start immediately looking into what are the services which those companies they want and they require and I start generating the ideas, the project ideas and the process of the project ideas. Commercial establishment also. I can serve a lot of commercial establishment. Public util utility organization, you know, government ministries, you know, sometimes even the government, they need a lot of services. Social infrastructure, sometimes even NGOs, you know, weddings, you know, funerals, you know. Business enterprises catering to community ideas also. Even other entrepreneurs, I can, I can help them and provide them with support services. For me, it could be a project idea or identification of a project idea. Government organizations and local bodies, of course. Citizens, this normal, you know. Households, I can go even to households, you know. I can provide the services to the house, generally. We have said maybe pharmaceuticals, you know, pharmacies, you know, we said even groceries and, you know, food and so on. Idea generation E, of course, I have to have the creative effort. I need to be creative. If I'm not creative, I cannot penetrate the market. I cannot have a niche in the market. I cannot sustain my niche in the market and grow with, them, with the growth of that niche if I don't have that creative ability. In the creative ability, I have to be a problem solver. I have to work in what we call development of problem solving products or services. It's, it's a problem, it's a difficulty, it's a challenge, I solve it by bringing an idea. And this is a business uh, opportunity, identification or reverse of a business idea. Exploitation of new technology or material to meet a widely uh, you know, felt need. I use the technology you know, to address a need. Technical extension of an established product concept. You know, I technically help a project a factory by providing technical support for this for this uh, for this factory to to develop and to grow better creating a demand in emerging lifestyle and this is every day we can create a demand we can create a need we can create a demand in different products and services on daily basis technical work of course introducing product services not available in the region or the country Value addition through technical or managerial uh, innovation. Idea generation, F, other means, as we said, literature, exposure, 
reading, internet, television, the media, of course, travel. Now we come to the fourth chapter of this lesson, which is SNAP investigation and evaluation. How we are going to evaluate and how we are going to investigate our idea generation or idea process identification. First, we have to look into the sources of information. Entrepreneurs that engage in the same business. I have to look and see, are there entrepreneurs engaged in the same business? I can talk to them. I can discuss it with them. I can see what are the problems and the difficulties they have faced in starting this business or how they're growing with their business today. Who could be the potential customers? Who should be my target groups? I'm looking for teenagers, elderly people, kids. I'm looking for low income, high income, middle income. I'm looking for a locality or a zone where the customers, I can serve them. I can see industry agencies, industries, associations, what do they see are problems and difficulties for the industry or a sector in the industry where I can chip and I can help with, of course, a project idea, Consult consultants and consultation firms, machinery supplier. Sometimes the idea comes also from a machinery supplier, from a technology provider. He may come and say, listen, I have this technology which could allow you to, to make uh, ice cream. Mm. This would be a good idea generation process, you know, because the, the machinery supplier, the technology supplier, he can give you the idea by the technology which she or he acquires. Here we come to sometimes uh, we have to be cautious and we have to avoid errors in selection. And how can we do this? How can we avoid error in selection? So there's always a problem by saying the me too syndrome. Well, I have my friend, I have my neighbor, I have a colleague, he started a saloon. He started a car mechanic uh, workshop. He started a, a small shoe factory. I can do it also. But to do it, do you have the potential? Do you have the profile for that? Do you have the investment capability for that? Do you have the time effort for that? So the me syndrome is a very dangerous syndrome. You have to be sure is, this is why we had to go through the idea process, identification and idea generation step by step, so not to get into that mistake. I can have Mistakes in numbers, and numbers is investment. I have to make very sure when I do the collection of the data, my numbers are correct. You know, the story of an elephant syndrome, you know, this is, could be grow very big. Let me do it. But I'm capable of doing it, to grow it that big, that fast. You know, do I have my project to go in a square pig in a round hole? Do I have to do that? Do my enterprise, I should take it to undifferentiated, undifferentiated completely undifferent enterprise. Failure to grasp key elements of success, and those are very important. If I don't see how competent I am to grasp the key elements of success, I may have a lot of problems in the future. And I, it could be a big error and a mistake for me in selecting the project idea or the generation of a project idea. You know, I just have seen the first project and I just want to catch the first bus. I've seen a project in front of me that I can, I can, I can take it easily and I can go with it. I can have a small cold store. I can have a mobile uh, phone store. Why not me to take it? Because it's the first thing which came to me into the bus. No. I have to think, I have to link, uh, I have to link, I have to analyze, I have to see uh, what investment I'm going to put there, do I have the, the, the right amount to do there, uh, I'm capable of doing this project or not, not just the first bus I have seen and then it's taking me anywhere, I just take it and go. Those, I have to be very cautious to look into those things because those errors 
if we start wrong, we'll develop our enterprise wrong and we'll grow wrong and we will have uh, losses and not, prof not profitability. Of course, always if I can, if my sources of information are not credible, if I'm not getting the right information, all my idea generation process will be quite wrong. You know, sometimes some people are quite emotional, and this is, you know, very negative and very bad uh, in, as an entrepreneurial setup or to start a new enterprise. That, uh, you know, yes, you can see the mistakes, you can see problems and difficulties, but we don't want to step back. I mean, I'm too emotional about this enterprise or about this project, and I want just to go ahead with it. This is too dangerous. Because I have always to sing, I have always to stop, I have always to rethink. If I'm having difficulties and problems, I have to come back. I have to stop. I have to readdress myself. Why should I continue on a project which will make me to lose money? So I have to think and rethink. Now we come to the last part of this session today key issues for idea generation and the process of identification of project ideas. How comfortable will you be technically? Are you comfortable with the technology you are using, going to be using, or you have been sourced? How is the market access? Is it that attractive? How competitive is that market? Those are key issues we have to address it and we have to think about it. How much is the profitability? How much I'm getting? I'm doing all of that work. What is my rate of return? I'm getting 5%, 10%, 15%. Of course, it will be marked depending on the project, but also on the durability of my IRR, my rate of return on the investment I'm doing. But I have to look into that. I have to look into the profitability of this project. Or can I get another project that may be more profitable for me, but it's also good and suits and matches me. And I can start with this, then I can look into the other project. So profitability is the key issue for any project idea I identify or I start to think about it. How risky is this project? Is it a high risk? Is it a middle risk? Because it's all, the risk is all depends also on profitability, but I have to look into it. I have to study it. I have to see what is my risk. You know, if it's a high risk, why should I take it? But this, of course, it will all depend on how did I study it? My information is correct. You know, my, 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 my numbers are correct. The data collected comes from a credible sources. Okay, this will all, you know, help me in minimizing the risk or do what we call calculation of risks. Sometimes, in some, in some, in some projects, key issues I have to make sure how critical is the dependence upon government. You know, should I depend on the government? The government may change, they may change policies. It depends, of course, on the project. Six, do the success factors and risk determine much your own business? Yes, but this I have to think about it. I have to think about it, I have to be careful about it, to look into those success factors. Because the success factors, it is, should be in an equilibrium, in a balance with the risks. I have to balance them. Seven, would you be able to learn and grip over it. Uh, have you the capability to learn, to think, and to rethink? Those are very key issues. I have to look into them, and I have to determine them. Because if I don't do that, these key issues at the end, when I start bringing together the project idea, and I started to, to, to go into the screening of the project idea, and then I grasp the project idea which find it, it suits my profile. I looked into the market, I looked into my niche, I looked into what I'm doing into the market. 
then I start looking into those points, you know, on those key issues. Are they are there in the in this project? Are you enthusiastic about it? Because it's all come from the heart. Any entrepreneurial project, it is, you know, an entrepreneur has to use his brain, but his heart has to be there. Because you should love what do you do. You should respect, you know, the, the job you're doing. It makes you to, to work with passion. It will make you to work with enthusiasm for developing, you know, this, uh, this project. This is an important indicator of success. So I have to look into it. I'm enthusiastic about it. Do I have the guts to do it? This is an important key success or indicator of success. Today, we finished part two, business opportunity identification. I hope that you learned from part one and part two on project identification because this is a very important uh, setup or element in uh, the life of a potential entrepreneur. This is where do they start? Okay, this is where the heat comes. This is when they start looking into how they identify or regenerate the idea. What is the process to do that? From where I can get the project idea? How I can help myself to dream and to define a project idea. And then, of course, it has to be a systematic approach to come into the real idea which really matches my profile. And we have looked into that and we have seen how this is happening. So the minute I start grasp the project idea and I start analyzing the project idea, I am on the road, the right road, on what we call the life cycle of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur who started thinking about the project idea, started developing the project idea, which should be the road ahead for developing, creating an enterprise from micro to small and medium. Thank you very much. And if you need further information on project identification, uh, business plan identification, idea identification, part one or part two, please go back to the website and thank you very much.